Good morning, everyone. We're going to give it a couple of minutes so that people can join. And then we're going to start with this webinar. Welcome everyone, good morning. My name is Nelly and I'm the Senior Manager of Events and Stakeholder Engagement at the BC Council for International Education. Thank you for joining us today for this webinar on a new COIL initiative, the program for the internationalization of the curricula for the Americas. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, before we move forward, it's important that I acknowledge that at BCCIE, we live and work on the unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. I know most of us are very familiar with Zoom nowadays, but just as a reminder, please use the Q&A function um, to submit any questions you may have or comments. And if you need any technical assistance, please use the chat box and myself or one of my colleagues will try to help you with your inquiry. Our speakers today are Ophelia Cervantes, Executive Director at PIC Americas, Maura McDonald, faculty at Royal Roads University and Andrew Osborne at Douglas College. Now, without further ado, Ophelia, I wanna hand it over to you. Thank you so much, Neil. It's really a great pleasure and honor to be here. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to the members of BCCIE. Uh, may I share my screen, please? Yes, please. Oh, here I, I go. So, in fact, I come today with an invitation to participate into this third version of our program. The program is entitled Program for the Interna Internationalization of the Curricula with the goal to strengthening America's current and future labor force. So um, very quickly, I would like only to mention that this program has been launched by AMPEI and we represent the largest association in Mexico for promoting international education. Uh, the program was launched initially in September 2020 and uh, the name of the program at that time was uh, PIC for Program for the Internationalization of the Curricula, but with actions only between Mexico and the United States. We were very successful inviting um, COIL teaching teams, and then we had the opportunity also to bring them together to share their experiences in San Cristobal de las Casas in Chiapas. <clears throat> then we were very, very lucky to extend the program to include Canadian partners. And today uh, we will see that uh, some Canadian institutions represented by uh, great colleagues uh, will be sharing their experiences uh, with COIL because I think uh, in Mexico, the United States and Mexico, uh, sorry, and Canada, we are fully convinced of the power, the, the great impact that the use of COIL could produce for the interna internationalization of our academic programs. So in 2022nd, uh, we met in Mexico City also for sharing the experiences after working virtually for all the years. And then today uh, we are launching the program uh, that we call Peak for the Americas, uh, because the idea is to open opportunities to collaborate, uh, offering coil experiences to students across the Americas. Uh, this program has been evolving from the really beginning. At the be uh, in, the, in its origins, we had the support from the US uh, Embassy in Mexico City. Then uh, when the program was extended to Canada, uh, we received the support, more funding from the US Embassy in Canada. And this year we are launching this program thanks to the support of the Stevens Initiative that maybe you know is fully committed to promote virtual exchange. Uh, with the support of the Aspen Institute and the Bezos Family Foundation. There is also another uh, organization in Mexico uh, named Fomento Educacional, who uh, contributes to strengthening the collaboration, academic collaboration in between Mexico and the United States. So uh, the program has been uh, working for the last four years, but now we have the possibility to include partners from all over, all across the Americas. 
uh, as strategic alliances, we have BCCIE and many other uh, organizations, sister organizations, we call them, that allow us to reach faculty from all the different countries in uh, Mexico, Canada, and the United States at the beginning. But now we are extending the collaboration with Latin America through uh, the participation of INILAD that represents the Latin American Initiative for the Interna Internationalization of Higher Education Institutions. Uh, they bring together other organizations coming out from Chile, Colombia, Argentina, uh, and Peru. And then, uh, of course, Brazil too. And uh, we have a great colla uh, collaboration also with, uh, in the United States, uh, CCID, representing the Community Colleges for International Development, as well as uh, TIEC from Texas, and CONAHEC, that brings together institutions from North America. In addition to that, we also collaborate with CBIE and in Mexico with the Red Latam Coil. Altogether, we would like to offer opportunities to the new generation of young professionals. The main motivation that allow us to create this program is that we all face several uh, challenges from the political, economical, environmental, and social point of view. And our mission is to contribute to improve the skills of the future labor force of the Americas. As you know, uh, the migration waves are a, a very severe problem, and we would like to develop more capacities in Latin America to allow uh, young professionals to stay in their own countries, but to also to develop um, collaboration with the north of, of, of the region. So uh, we would like to have a new generation of professionals that have a better understanding and have uh, uh, the right skills to tackle the challenges and will contribute to the economic development of their communities. So um, as you recall, the pandemic was a very difficult time. So during that period, we launched the program, uh, not only because the pandemic, but also because we believe that COIL could contribute to offer opportunities uh, of internationalization to students that will never go abroad. So we fully believe that internationalization is a key issue for academic excellence. And uh, the new generation must be prepared uh, for a good performance in a global, in a global world. So um, how to develop a COIL program? Ampey uh, would like to support institutions because we believe that the COIL program uh, is challenging it requires knowledge, commitment, and support from institutional authorities. Uh, how could we succeed to train faculty, to engage them, and to offer to their students a great COIL experience? So uh, very, very quickly, I would like only to recall what is COIL. COIL stands for Collaborative Online International Learning. Uh, certainly you know that this approach was pioneered by SUNY uh, in the United States. And uh, the idea is to bring students and professors together across cultures to learn, discuss, and collaborate as a, as a part of a regular class. Uh, for offering that experience, professors need to partner before to design what will be the experience to their students. And uh, later on, during the semester, students will collaborate online to uh, develop a joint project. Paul becomes part of a regular class uh, enabling students to have a significant intercultural experience, both staying at their home institutions. A call experience, certainly you have heard a lot about that, but it can be created in any discipline, but we encourage interdisciplinary collaboration. Uh, we promote active student learning and especially teamwork, work, working with uh, colleagues that are abroad, and that the main goal is to uh, encourage cross-cultural interaction and better understanding, using, of course, uh, the power of uh, information technologies. Uh, the COIL component that is part of a regular course could be uh, from five to, in some cases, uh, successful cases, uh, up to 15 weeks. So uh, this is like the general structure of a COIL component that uh, I will mention very briefly. Uh, we start with an ice breaking, then uh, we organize the teams, 
to work during the following two to three weeks uh, into a collaborative, collaborative project work, solving a specific problem. And finally, there is the, the last week devoted to insight, to be aware of what is the value of the experience uh, they accomplished. So in our program, the program for the internationalization of the Americas, our main objective is to strengthen, to contribute to strengthening the internationalization of the curricula of higher education institutions in the Americas, promoting the creation and development of COIL courses. For that, uh, we recognize that uh, there are several steps to follow. The first one, the first challenge is how could I detect the right partner for me? Uh, if I am a faculty member, uh, I belong to my institution. Maybe my institution has some connections through international affairs office or through global education offices, but how could I be connected to someone else? So we provide support for that important uh, step of detecting who could become my core teaching partner. Then I need training. Maybe I have heard about what is COIL, but I don't know how to apply this methodology. So in our program, we also provide uh, the possibility to get training. In addition to that, every institution in the near future, we hope, should have a COIL coordinator appointed, a person who will be in charge of promoting the development of more COIL courses in their institutions. And finally, we believe that COIL is like the seed that allows to grow a very uh, close and steady and long-term collaboration, academic collaboration between institutions. So Ampay, through this program, uh, is aiming to provide networking support, uh, offering training through our COIL design workshops. In addition, we provide a mentoring program uh, that supports faculty during the implementation of their core uh, experience. And finally, we provide seminars oriented to COIL coordinators. I will explain a little bit more about each of these activities. Uh, but before, I would like to uh, represent in this graphic the different stages uh, that are proposed in our program. So from last month up to uh, the end of April, we work on networking. Our event, uh, our launch event took place on March 15. And from that moment, we have been promoting, uh, uh, divulgating, uh, uh, sending information everywhere, inviting widely all participants to register to our COIL design workshops that will be offered. Uh, I, I will uh, mention uh, later on the dates, but normally during our summer, uh, our summer time. To get ready to teach the COIL course during the fall session that could go from August to December in general terms. So three main steps, networking, training, and then implementation with mentoring support. And then for the following year, uh, we will organize a symposium with the best experiences uh, sharing whatever what happened with faculty members in participate in our program. So let me explain with a little more detail uh, what is uh, each of these stages. As I mentioned, networking, uh, it's not always easy, and we provide two different possibilities. First, uh, we have developed, it's almost done, it's, we have a, already a beta version of what we call a partnership platform. In this platform, we invite faculty members to register and to provide like a short academic profile to let other faculty know that they are interested to offer a COIL course. So uh, once they are registered, this is like the first step in our program, they are able to search and to look all the different academic profiles from faculty from other countries that are ready to go. Uh, you will find academic um, uh, information as well as contact data to be able to start the conversation. Uh, it is open to everyone, and I invite you to register today. Please take note of this new URL, coil.americas.ampay.org.mx. In addition to that, uh, we invite you to our academic speed dating sessions, and I will explain what it is. So um, for the uh, partnership platform, uh, it is possible to uh, make search by country, by academic discipline, and also by institution. 
All the different organizations that belong to uh, the program have already registered, and we hope that all participants from BCCIE will be there too, very soon. And then you can get uh, right now the list of faculty that were already registered, but uh, I hope that for next month, you will be able also to de detail what, uh, which are the courses you would like to propose and search which are the courses proposed by other faculty members. So it will be easier to find the right match. In addition to that, we organize, as I said, academic speed dating sessions. Those are important opportunities to be connected with potential co-teaching partners. How does it work? Uh, once you register, and here you have the information uh, that I will distribute also at the end of the session, uh, you register, and then you will receive the link to be connected uh, in any of those dates. So we meet almost twice a month, and uh, in that virtual space, we organize the participants by academic discipline, and they can start talking uh, divided into breakout rooms. So at the beginning, we uh, give a brief description of the program and the dynamic, and then we go immediately to start talking with other potential core teaching partners. This has been uh, very successful because uh, you start meeting faculty members who would like maybe uh, to offer a course similar to what you have in mind. And then at the end, you will have concrete new contact data to continue the conversation. So I invite you to participate into these academic speed dating sessions. Uh, you have only to register once and you will receive the link. Uh, in fact, it's a, a recurrent link uh, to be able to be connected at least twice a month. Uh, it is a free access and that you are uh, welcome to join us anytime. Then once you succeed to have a COIL teaching partner, you are ready to go, but you need to define what will be the COIL experience about. For that, we invite uh, professors to participate into our COIL design workshops. The COIL design workshops uh, last for four weeks. During that time, all participants have asynchronous access to the educational platform, and then they are free to go to the content that has been designed. First, uh, we start with a contribution coming out from SUNY, and then uh, we have invited experts uh, from the United States, uh, from Europe, and uh, also uh, Mexican faculty members who have shared their experiences to develop the content of this, uh, of this educational platform. So you have access during that time to all the materials. That include um, uh, papers, uh, videos, uh, examples of courses that have been offered, and a lot of information that will guide you step by step to be able to define, to design, what will be the syllabus of your COIL component. In addition, uh, you are invited to join us every Friday from 11 to one o'clock, this is Mexico time, every week during those four weeks, and then to interact with the instructor. Those uh, live sessions are uh, very uh, uh, enriching because it allows to exchange experiences with other faculties that are designing their call experience. And in addition, uh, to receive uh, guidance, uh, support from our experts uh, that are the instructors for those workshops. So uh, it is really recommended if you have already a partner, uh, the, the participation, uh, the registration is open. You could choose right now where is the best date to apply? I could participate already maybe in the June workshop. So this is the moment you are invited to register today. Um, something that I believe distinguishes a little bit our program is that in addition to uh, the regular training that is proposed, we have a mentoring program. This mentoring program allows uh, faculty members to warranty the, the quality of their experience. Uh, once they agreed what will be the call experience for the students, during the implementation, we offer uh, the support by call experts that uh, are there uh, 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 as, a, 
as, as additional support in the case they would like to receive additional uh, bibliography or, or maybe more hints in the case they have some problems or any ex exchange experiences, sharing what's going on into their core courses. So they are not alone. Uh, we have the support uh, to take them up to the end of the COIL experience. And as I already mentioned, we have already uh, the concern of providing opportunities for uh, getting all the knowledge and, and uh, experience required to become a COIL coordinator uh, in your institution. So uh, in the audience, if there are uh, members of the uh, staff of, of the international offices, you are invited to join us because this fall, we will offer another seminar uh, that will provide good ideas about how to make your program, your COIL program grow in your institution, how to make it solid, how to ex in increase the number of participants, how to bring more um, faculty member uh, to use the COIL methodology, how to develop more connections uh, with, with other faculty abroad. So uh, these um, seminars have the participation of at least uh, four experts, COIL experts. In the past, we had, for instance, the participation of um, um, Rosie De Leon from the Paul University, Stephanie Docker from Florida International University, and two more Mexican experts, Brenda Garcia, who has been very successful offering courses in Europe and Latin America, mm -hmm. and also Professor Martin Pantoja. So uh, this is very attractive for uh, consolidating your COIL program in your institution. So now the question is, how could I participate? Uh, there are three simple steps to be part of the program. First, uh, we need to connect and to confirm who could become a COIL teaching partner. Uh, if you are a professor, I invite you to join, to register into our uh, partnership platform, uh, going to coil.americas.ampay.org.mx and also attending our academic speed dating sessions. So this is the first step. How could I connect? Once I have my partner, and I am ready to start, then I should check the calendar and apply to participate into a COIL design workshop. I am, I am very pleased to tell you that all, C, uh, all BCCIE members will receive a scholarship. Thanks to the Stevens Initiative support, we are able to cover the, the, the expenses of training. So uh, you are really welcome to join as soon as possible. And then you will be ready to implement your COIL component. So this is a, a brief description of the program, and I will be very, very pleased to answer all, all your questions. Thank you for the opportunity to share this invitation. I'm looking forward to see you soon, uh, an active member of the program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ophelia, for sharing the information about the program. Mm -hmm. Now, next up, I'm going to invite Moira and Andrew, two faculty members, to share their experiences participating in a training program very similar to the one that Ophelia just explained. So I'll be sharing my screen, and then Moira, I'm going to hand it over to you. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Um, muchas gracias, Sofilia. That was beautiful. I, I was ready. Oh, right, Andrew. I could see you and I nodding like, yeah, yeah. It was really, really helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm really, really grateful. Um, I'm uh, actually in Ireland at the moment. And uh, there, is, um, there is some opportunity in the future for a trilateral coil uh, between Ireland, USA, and my institution. So, right? Um, so I really do appreciate everything I just saw there. And I was uh, jotting down the information for uh, the June session. So I really appreciate that. I, also, your enthusiasm, um, certainly as an instructor. Um, and feel free, uh, Nelly, to throw the next slide up. Thank you so much. Um, as someone who uh, you know was learning this information last year, uh, around June, almost coming up on a year now, I'm very pleased that in my first thing I'm talking about today is instructor training. So um, so thank you for, for everything you just said. Um, in, in this um, uh, experience, I just wanted to, uh, to share as a faculty member, I found um, 
training to be the uh, number one jumping off point. Um, it, uh, it certainly gave me a framework for what I was ready to do next. Um, and not to, um, I don't want to take away uh, too much. You're going to hear from a real expert after me, Andrew Osborne. So he's going to really tell you some, some amazing things. Uh, my, uh, my story will be uh, will be that we have one, uh, two, let me see, I would have been the third uh, successful coil. The two coils we did uh, with uh, Eteso uh, in Mexico were wonderful. I got um, uh, sort of, I found up, I got some information about it and I thought I'd like to try that too. So I did the training. And then I started off with my conceptual framework, which is on the screen. So everything you said, I had the future student connections in mind. I had that intercultural learning. Andrew will be talking about internationalization at home. I heard you mention that as well, Ophelia. So I think we're all really on the same page. I think the values were very aligned. Um, I had institution uh, communication. I found a partner with that institution and, and was communicating. We were working with the Philippines. Uh, it was wonderful. Uh, we partnered up in your speed dating uh, conversation. So that was fun. Um, so I'll take you just through my little infographic here, the little smart art. Um, so starting in, in the top left hand corner, I emphasize everything you just did about the instructor training. And then we put the student in the center of the concept. So what will this do for our young um, generation? This was all based on a bachelor's degree in my experience. So, so that um, person taking their bachelor of arts in, in our uh, area in international hotel management and global tourism. So these, uh, these students, I was thinking about the people they would meet. I was thinking about who their friendships would be. I was thinking about how they could be change makers down the road. And that was the, the big center focal point. And then finding the partner was all helped through all of that instructor training. And I would encourage any faculty members um, to do the training and then jot down what it means to them or what they would need out of this. And um, it really was very straightforward. I, I, I found that when I wrote out what I was looking for, um, I moved from the top of that um, circle of having great communication with the other institution to trying to align with an actual course that we had in common. And that was, you know, that was our sort of first, uh oh, we don't have a course that matches at the same time of year with the same number of students. So we're like, okay, how do we fix that? So then we went a little further and we found one. Um, we found an entrepreneurship course, which is very interesting because you would see a student in a room that either would have a real affinity for entrepreneurial spirit or some that would be like, I don't know what this is. So that was going to be a really enjoyable. Um, a kickstart to COIL because we were on a topic that both institutions were sharing very similar learning outcomes. So if you go to the bottom of my circle there, you'll see the learning outcomes were um, compared and we checked that box. So we start off with found, I found our partner through the training, had the speed dating, found someone that wanted to work together on a course that aligned. And we needed all of those things to, to happen. So I'll talk about that in my operation, um, operate, op when we operationalized it. So on the far left, we said, how do we make this work? Like, where are the nuts and bolts? I said, okay, what time are we gonna do this? Are we doing it in the fall? Are we doing it in the spring? Are we doing it in the summer? So both institutions, you know, had to look at what the timeline was. And then as Ophelia mentioned, we had to look at what technology we were using because the learning management systems were not um, alike and that will be something a faculty member will come across. And so we're like, that's fine, we have other platforms. So we looked at, um, we looked at Google, we thought how to with Google Slides, how will students work together? We looked at a simulator for gameplay, which is very entrepreneurial. So students would, uh, we, we envisioned our students in the Philippines and our students in British Columbia to be working on um, a gameplay simulation uh, group that is actually out of Canada that we really liked working with. And we thought this will be great. Everyone will get on a team and they'll all try to run this operation together. So that was the idea. We used lots of fun technology, uh, listed a few here um, that were in mind. Uh, and then we looked at assignments. And so this is where where the faculty members, I think, are having the most uh, the most fun with it because we looked at what it would look what it would be. We found um, that cases to find a case that was open OER, open education resource. Find a case that 
didn't cost any money to everyone, anyone, keeping our costs to zero uh, and find a case that would work for uh, two institutions that were in different parts of the world uh, that had different time zones. You know, that was the, the thing too in that opera um, uh, to uh, operationalize it is what time of day, um, how many weeks, uh, how are we uh, uh, getting together and when, and these are all very solvable problems. These are easy things to to figure out. I think putting the course um, agree uh, course assignment together, or if you wanted more than one, that that was the most uh, teacher enjoyable part for me was to to get into it and figure out you know what are we all going to do together. Um, Ophelia, you mentioned the teamwork. Well, this was high, high, high on the list. So, what were those learning outcomes? Back to that other part of the conceptual framework. Um, the learning outcomes included teamwork. So, we wanted to make sure that was uh, part of the the case study. So we found a case. It was really fun. It, it was a, a open um, open resource. Anyone could have it. It was street food in Ho Chi Minh City. So this great case where entrepreneurial uh, students were going to figure out how to open and run this great uh, little establishment. And that is the that's the plan. And then we built in, uh, from an education standpoint, it was important that we built a reflection piece in. So just to wrap that up, we added a reflection piece in the assignment, you know, where the students could give back to the faculty members so that it could be tweaked for the future. That was the uh, that was the intent. Um, certainly from a research standpoint, I'd always be interested in what the reflections were and how this could be improved on. So from a faculty teaching and a faculty research, I sort of were coming at that from both sides. Very, very straightforward. Um, I, I found this to be a really delightful um, process. Um, we just had a, a little glitch and that's the last slide for you is that I changed my conceptual framework and Nelly, you can go ahead to my second and last slide. I don't know if you can see it, it looks a bit small on my end, but basically I blew, uh, blew it out and redrew it for myself and all the same core pieces are there, but I wrapped communication around it. And, and that would be my advice is that in order to make it happen and ours did not happen because we lost our time uh, from a term that started and a term that ended and we thought we had it all wrapped up and then we didn't. So I put a communication around the whole thing. And this was, uh, that again, another solvable problem. So we're ready to do it again. Everything's in place. We have our course, our course outlines, our course curriculums, our uh, learning outcomes. We're ready to go. Uh, and now I, if I'm going to do the uh, two more I have in mind, I put that comms piece as a big, big over arc um, for myself in the future. So just to, uh, to share the, the uh, best practices, and, and I know you're going to hear a lot in a few minutes from, um, from Andrew. So thank you very much for listening. I hope I didn't go over my time. Um, and allow me uh, to introduce Andrew Osborne from Douglas College uh, in our beautiful uh, province. Thank you so much. Thank you, Moira, and uh, thank you, Ophelia. Um, I, I've really been inspired by uh, this uh, webinar, and uh, I think the um, the COIL training program is fabulous, and I definitely think I would learn so much from this opportunity. So I just want to say thank you for bringing and sharing your experiences. Um, if we could go to the next slide, please. What I'll do today is I'm going to share with you some of the some of the things I've learned uh, from a personal perspective as a faculty member at Douglas working a lot with COIL in my courses, it's certainly my experience alone that I'm sharing today. Any number of my fabulous colleagues at Douglas College who are also implementing COIL would have probably their own sort of unique experiences to share with some similarities. So um, I've been fortunate to have uh, completed or well completed three COILs and uh, am currently uh, doing my fourth year. And in my experience, I've done all the kind of range of partnerships uh, and sort of relationships that have existed in the coils uh, in the coil world here. So, the first coil that I did was with Toyo University, and uh, that partnership that that coil partnership that developed was um, was uh, supported by the Global Engagement Office and the fantastic staff at the Douglas Global Engagement Office that were able to sort of um, uh, sort of guide me through some of their partners. Uh, institutional partners, strategic partners, and those partners that were interested in COIL or virtual exchange. And, and that was how I sort of did my first one. 
with Toyo University, and we had a, a great uh, semester-long COIL project there that we did. Uh, and then I had this critical intervention in my experience, which was the UMAP training. So I did two UMAP training, uh, COIL training programs uh, in 2023, and uh, that really boosted my confidence. It boosted my confidence, and it boosted my confidence, too, as well, sort of develop my COIL skills. And I would encourage you in the audience today, whether you're working in program management or on the faculty side, to take advantage of these opportunities. I think that they were it was an invaluable intervention in my COIL life, uh, and it really gave me uh, the opportunity to meet prospective COIL partners and also to, to really uh, learn a lot about how this COIL can be implemented uh, in courses. So that intervention, that uh, UMAP training program that was invaluable, connected me with Cebu Normal University and two faculty members at Cebu Normal University in the Philippines. And I did two COILs in fall 2023. Uh, and I had a number of different um, courses involved of my own. Uh, and that was a fabulous experience. And we had all met through that training program, which was great. Uh, and then now I'm working on my fourth COIL uh, this semester with uh, Uni Universidad in Madrid. Uh, and it's just wrapping up this week. Uh, so I, I haven't slept much <laughs> and I will look forward to the end of the term and be able to wrap that up. But so far it's it's been great. It's the shortest COIL I've ever run. It's only been about five weeks. All the others have been the semester long, yeah, almost semester long. Uh, and I've learned a lot from this new experience too. Uh, next slide, please, Nelly. Uh, so the, in the relationship component, I've I've had a career in my career. I've I've enjoyed working in program management in international offices at the University of Regina and Simon Fraser University, and I've also been a faculty team member for a long time. And so um, I like to think of COIL as an opportunity for both in the classroom and uh, within the institution as well. And really, uh, from my perspectives here. I've loved as a faculty member to enjoy the opportunity of exploring kind of COIL virtual exchange and how that really enhances the student experience and learning outcomes. And I teach intercultural communication courses. And so COIL fits in really well, I think with what I'm uh, teaching at Douglas College. However, I can see COIL uh, really supporting any course. Uh, I think it's just, as long as it's sort of tailored in, in a way that works for the instructors and the students, um, it's definitely supported my students and their learning outcomes too. And there's also great opportunities to collaborate with faculty members. So uh, with my partners at Cebu Normal University, we developed these great coils, we ran them, and now we're engaging in some research on how these coils have been effective. And that partnership has started to uh, evolve and develop. And that was a bit unexpected actually. And that was sort of this wonderful outcome that came from this. And also to their part of partners in research and uh, further kind of coil opportunities may come from this particular uh, uh, sort of experience, which I really like. From the international perspective, uh, or inst institutional perspective, I should say, there's opportunity for internationalization at home. So this is what Ophelia was mentioning too, about how we can bring in these really engaging international kind of intercultural experiences uh, right into the classroom where we're at, right? And that enhances traditional global mobility or other initiatives as well, right? And there's the opportunity to engage uh, with faculties and researchers, which is really kind of important for the institutions, and also to develop uh, strategic partnerships. And I think we're starting to see uh, institutionally that their COIL is being uh, integrated, virtual exchange integrated into our partnerships, right? Into our MOUs, into those agreements too. And I think that's a really wonderful thing. Next slide, please. So some of the challenges I've experienced um, uh, as a COIL practitioner, none of my um, curriculum, uh, none of my syllabuses and courses aligned ever perfectly with any of my partners. I've always had to work to sort of identify what are some of the shared components uh, and that we could build from those shared components, sort of build the COIL from. Uh, and I think that that takes the longest time in my experience. So I'd encourage you, whether you're working in an international office or a faculty member, when we're talking about relationships as COILs, um, I think it does take a significant amount of time uh, to find those uh, those kind of areas in which we can explore and develop the COIL. Uh, like Moya was talking, the semesters uh, didn't always align. The time zones didn't always align. I found that my partners were starting earlier and finishing later than the sort of Douglas semester that I was working in. So we had to how to navigate dates and semesters. The time zones all meant that uh, honestly, it was mostly asynchronous, the learning. So that wouldn't happen necessarily in um, with every COIL partner, but with my experiences, 
It's been asynchronous. And that brings its own challenges for our students with their life work balance, right? They're, they're working a lot, often full-time, full-time studies. And then they're balancing that sort of asynchronous learning requirement too. And it can be a lot. Uh, as well as some of the uh, some of the successes that I've enjoyed is that I've had reflected back to me uh, in student uh, outcomes and assessments some deep and significant intercultural learning, right? And I think that that's been so the, the most rewarding part of my COIL experience is having my students say to me, I've sort of expanded my worldview. I've appreciated cultural identity components and cultural values differently. I see myself as a communicator in different ways with different styles. And that has been sort of the best part of my COIL experience uh, among all the other wonderful things. And so I think that that's really been the, the true success of my COIL experience. And that could be in any, I think, COIL that's run, regardless of the subject or the topic, I think there will be that critical reflection that needs to get done around what you learned, how you grew, how you've changed through this experience. Uh, and that's been one of the best parts for me, as well as I think the skills development. Ophelia, you were talking about sort of developing a global workforce, right? And the, the needs of this sort of generation as they emerge into their careers. Well, there's a whole host of skills that gets developed in uh, COILS in terms of virtual uh, global team management, uh, how we can sort of do document design, you know, we're talking about uh, the opportunities there to learn across different um, different disciplines. And I think that there's really great engagement there that happens as well. And then finally, I think most important thing is self-awareness, the increased self-awareness that the COILs can bring in our students. And that increased self-awareness, what I find it does is it also extends into empathy, right? Empathy for other, empathy for self, empathy for, uh, for um, individuals whom we're working. Uh, we're collaborating, and I think that that's been one of the most important results of the COIL project is just a more empathetic, more informed kind of sense of self, and I think that that can probably only help uh, in the world in which we're living. So those have been my uh, insights uh, and my experiences, and I'm happy to say that um, I'm going to develop a new COIL uh, coming up in the fall. We'll have a trilateral COIL, as Mario was talking about, between Spain and France and and uh, and uh, my class in Douglas, so I'm looking forward to that. And what I've enjoyed about the uh, the networking experiences and Ophelia, I would look forward to your networking experiences. I've done the speed dating one. I've done the the uh, the kind of formal partnerships with UMAP, uh, and I even uh, to um, in my in my most recent partnership with uh, Madrid. I was uh, registered for a speed dating event uh, and typical of my level of uh, dating game, I got the date wrong because it was hosted in Japan. So I actually showed up on the wrong day. The virtual speed dating room was empty. What I did was I posted my credential, my, my sort of blurb on the virtual wall. My partner also showed up late, saw that my I had posted a little blurb inviting anyone to kind of talk about coil with me. And then we just got this great coil that I'm running right now out of it. So there's any number of opportunities that you can have sort of relationships developing uh, and you never know what the partnership brings. So I do encourage you all, whether you're working in the global engagement office or your faculty member, COIL can definitely uh, support all, all our sort of strategic initiatives and in our uh, classrooms and students as well. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew and Moira, for sharing your experiences. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we have some time for Q&A. So um, members in the audience, if you have any questions, feel free to submit your questions using either the Q&A function or just by posting them in the chat box and we will be happy to answer them. And there's a question coming in. Um, which is, is there training or education for faculty and students around cultural differences, protocols, et cetera, that might impact the teaching and learning experience? Ophelia, do you want to start answering this one? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, in, in the workshop, we provide several materials and we talk about that issue because I think it's like a central problem. no? And the main goal is to facilitate uh, and to encourage more intercultural communication. So uh, that's something that uh, maybe is known from the theoretical point of view, but through the workshop, uh, you learn how to, to propose exercises, activities to encourage students uh, to live the experience. And after the, the, co the COIL uh, 
course, uh, I believe, and I think uh, um, Moira and Andrew will agree on that, mm -hmm. uh, as Andrew underlined, in fact, that uh, they develop that kind that kind of skills. So there are uh, now uh, it, it, it became uh, like a hot subject, I would say. There are several materials available uh, online, uh, videos explaining the situation, uh, providing examples, exercises, and so on. So this is the kind of materials we provide into the workshop. But the best experience uh, to learn about that is to leave it, I would say. Because then uh, running the your own COIL course, uh, uh, you be, that's something I love uh, in, in, in the COIL experience. Uh, it encourages you to become innovative and to apply creativity. Uh, then using um, IC tools, you are able to provide the new experiences. And, uh, and then I think uh, this is like a key aspect. It was even the main motivation at the beginning when the COIL uh, idea was developed. I would like to, to listen to uh, Moira and Andrew uh, experiences about that. Yeah, Andrew or, or Moira, whoever wants to jump in, if this was something that uh, you were planning on providing some training on with students or have you re had any challenges and maybe how did you solve them? Andrew, it's okay. I'll take uh, the first, is that all right with you or do you wanna go? Okay, <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you so much. I, um, Janine, that's a great question and at the, um, at the beginning, the uh, Padlet was uh, helpful and it was an instructional tool that we had already used in previous courses. But when I was also doing the UMAP training, what I noticed is that when I went in as the student in the instructor training, what the UMAP folks did with us is I, I saw the Padlet and I thought, oh, okay, another Padlet. But they used the Padlet in a way that made us all um, engage very differently than what I had done previously as someone who'd, who'd posted on a Padlet. And what I, what I took from that was exactly how to uh, allow the students to get to know each other the way uh, and care about each other, the way that the UMAP folks had us as uh, people all over the world working together quickly, uh, you know, for the first time, uh, care about each other. So we introduced ourselves from our families. So not just my name is, I teach here, I, uh, we told my parents are from here, I have two children. We talked about, you know, what we wanted to get from this. And we talked about things about that, um, maybe what we were worried about with it. And so as these Padlets, these postings started to go up and then the conversations, suddenly people were, the human part of it then started to emerge. And so the idea of making um, those connections early on um, and using the tenets that we have of teamwork and, and caring for each other and sharing what, what might happen uh, with the time changes, with uh, language differences, and uh, making these um, uh, these moments where students could actually feel that they've started off on a friendship instead of on a class assignment. And then maybe when they ran into these problems uh, that might be coming um, across of protocols, um, things of that nature, then maybe they would reach out and say, you know, are you having trouble? You haven't posted yet. I'm wondering if there's anything you need that I can do to help instead of taking a different approach to it. Um, so that was the uh, the start uh, that I learned as a UMAP um, student, bringing that into the classroom. Andrew, what what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. There's no there's no sort of easy quick and quick resource or playbook here. Um, in my experience, I've had support from Global Engagement International Office. Um, they're usually someone who's kind of um, had a lot of experience with protocol that can help. You can have those conversations first, even before you sort of meet. Um, your partners. I've had in my partnerships, in my COIL partnerships, I've had experiences where I've taken that sort of maybe more relational approach uh, at the right away in terms of building the um, sort of awareness of each other uh, uh, just before we kind of dive into the COIL development experience. And I've also had partners that are just real keen on developing the COIL and I haven't necessarily um, uh, taken the similar approach and for students well this is my course so they don't get the book before like we 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 kind of go through this process for the entire semester we apply sort of what we're learning in the course uh, in the coil so uh for the students i think that's the purpose of it but if you were maybe potentially running a coil 
where you didn't like the intercultural communication wasn't the course it was something else it's going to be history or 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 something like that um you would definitely there are resources available there are some coil centers like in florida uh in suny as well um and there are what I think is really exciting is the mentorship opportunity that Ophelia was talking about, where you could kind of rely on those individuals who've maybe experienced Quill to help you kind of walk through that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And as Andrew mentioned, my um, the his um, uh, global partnerships, the same at my school with the the team in the global partnerships uh, group, they were very, uh, very helpful and they see things that I need to know and they were helpful in teaching me on how to bring that just like Andrew mentioned in his experience. So that global partnership team, um, is essential, um, I think to my, um, my success with students and their success. So they all, um, they all have a a role to play in a really positive way. Uh, but thanks Janine. That's a great question. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, may I add only that uh, in the call design workshop uh, we offer, uh, sometimes we have participation from faculty members that already had call experiences. So it's so interesting to uh, to participate in that exchange of ideas, uh, sharing what works and what doesn't work also, and then uh, providing materials, no? Uh, because as you said, um, uh, what is important is to, to try first and uh, then to to it is interesting how they share that at the beginning they had a, an idea and then running the program they realize it's necessary it's needed to change so uh they will see that there are more opportunities which going on going on uh, during the, the implementation so um uh during the workshops they exchange um uh, experiences about uh, what was useful for instance uh they uh, share the kind of materials they already uh, uh put in practice and that they also uh, see new ideas uh, being being implemented. Um, um, I wanted also to to ask you if I, I am allowed, because I, I would like to see your point of view about the, the the language differences. Because sometimes it becomes like a challenge. I was attracted by the idea that Andrew mentioned that he will have a course with French, no France and and Spain and uh, certainly uh, Canada. So how will you solve the the, the language problem? of the language differences. I would like to learn about your experiences. Um, well, all, hmm, this is very good. Uh, the language differences, I mean, all the coils operate in English, right? Um, and so there is, um, all these institutions have a certain standard approach to like English language proficiency that gets translated into a kind of a, a, a fluency competency level in students that can manage. I think, where I have been surprised as a faculty member is in the the t- the 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 many types and styles of English that get represented in the coils, and that student perceptions get challenged to like what it means to be an English speaker or to communicate in English, and how these differences uh, can sort of re- they require to be navigated right quite quickly within the coil, and that students what we end up doing is like I take the time in my own course to talk about style differences in terms of communication not just like languages but in just in how we can how, how we how we communicate um with different uh, senses of directness or indirectness or other kind of kind of components like that that helps my students um but uh i would say that the challenge is there to navigate i've had mostly success uh and what happens is at the end of the term usually students come back and said i really had no idea i communicated in this way or that this was my kind of particular kind of cultural communication style or pattern and had i not experienced the coil i wouldn't really know that about myself and i think that that was really kind of interesting so definitely um there are uh, situations there uh, that are need to be navigated. Uh, when the students are working on Zoom, though, they do have uh, translation options. Some teams have used um, sort of like, uh, was it Meta, like VR? They have access individually to those things that offer sort of AI-generated translation. So it's kind of interesting. There are probably some things that will help going forward in the future, should there be uh, those language um, uh, sort of differences to navigate. But generally speaking, I find it successful. Mm, good. Thank you for sharing, Andrew and Ophelia and Moira. Um, Ophelia, there are a few practical questions about a PIC America's uh, coil-based program for you. The first one is, if we would not be ready to engage actively until the fall, 
Should he wait to register until then? No, register today. Uh, it's important to, to let other faculty know that you are interested to offer a call experience. So I invite you to, to register into our um, partnership platform uh, uh, that I will write here again the, the address, pic.americas. Um, yes. And then um, uh, even if you don't have um, the confirmation of the partnership, it is important for us to know that you are searching for, for a partner. So we can help you out. Uh, you can send us also an email and let us know what is the, the kind of academic profile you are searching for. And we'll do for the best to try to find out uh, the right partner for you. Excellent. Then another question asks, is there a membership fee? What is the budget should we should plan for? And must we be a UMAP member in order to join Pick America's COIL program? No, if you are already a BCCIE member, you are ready to go. You, are re you will receive a scholarship to participate for free in, into our program. And then the final practical question is uh, from Kevin, who's from Northern Lights College and says, hello, I'm trying to register, but my institution does not appear in the represented institutions. Yeah. Do we have to provide any documentation or any particular information to be able to register? No, please send us a mail and we will add it. Uh, it's because, and then I have to, to work with Neil because we would like to know all your members and we will add all, all the institutions. So you will find out uh, next time you will register. But please send an email and we will do it for you. We are uh, adding and adding more institutions, you know? Perfect. Thank you so much, Ophelia. I think that's all the questions we had so far. I see that in the chat, someone is saying that when we were back talking about those language differences, that someone has used Microsoft Translator downloaded to cell phones so that students can speak in their own language live, which apparently worked very well. And then Ophelia kind of confirmed that ICT tools can be very helpful. There are so AI tools available nowadays. It's interesting to try. Excellent, perfect. And I want to thank Ophelia, Moira and Andrew for joining us today and for sharing your valuable insights. Um, also for all the attendees here, Ophelia will also be attending and presenting at our annual BC International Education Week in June. So if you wanna learn more about COIL, please come to our conference and attend Ophelia's session as well. Um, we, will also, we also recorded this webinar, so it will be available for viewing afterwards. And I want to ask before we say goodbye to you to please fill out the Zoom survey when you log off. And that being said, thank you all for joining us today. And I wish you the great rest of your day. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.